2022 grade 8 Goss math contest questions 11 through 20. The 26 letters of the English alphabet are listed in an infinite repeating loop. What is the 258th letter in the sequence? Okay, so every 26 letters, this whole loop will repeat itself, right? Well, actually, I think I underlined too much of it. All the way to Z, only till Z, or Z if you're in Canada. So the 258, we have to divide that by 26. And when we do, we get 9 with a remainder of 24. So the last loop will have 24 letters in it. So I guess the 24th letter goes all the way till X, right? Because Y is the 25th and Z is the 26th. So X is the 258th letter. And therefore, unless you made a silly mistake, you should be able to get this. It's C. A public holiday is always celebrated on the third Wednesday of a certain month. In that month, the holiday cannot occur on which of the following days. Let's make a little calendar and let's see what happens. So mm, we've got 8, 9, 10, and so on, right? So what we have to do is figure out what it cannot occur on. Now, if you quickly put Wednesday as any of these days, you'll find that the third Wednesday will occur, obviously, on this week, anywhere from 15 to 21. But it will not be able to occur on a 22. Does that make sense? So let me give you an example. So let's say the Wednesday was on the 7th, right? The first Wednesday. Second Wednesday is obviously on the 14th. Third Wednesday is on the 21st. There's no way to make the third Wednesday on the 22nd. Because if you put the Wednesday here, right? You say, well, there you go. Yeah, but that's not the third Wednesday. That would be the fourth Wednesday. See what I mean? They want the third Wednesday. So a little bit of trial and error, and you can figure out that 22nd is not a date that is possible for the criteria of this question, and therefore B is the answer. A circular spinner is divided into three sections. An arrow is attached to the center of the spinner. The arrow is spun once. The probability that the arrow stops on the largest section is 50%. The probability it stops on the next largest section is 1 in 3. The probability it stops on the smallest section is. So we've got some spinner. And one section is 50%, so that's what? A half. The next section is um, one-third. And then they're asking, what is the fraction uh, of that so segment of that circle, I guess, whatever? So the, the whole circle is 1, so you have to subtract from it the half and the one-third. And I'm sure you guys are capable of doing fractions, and if you are, you will get one-sixth. So the answer to number 13 is C. A positive number is divided by both 3 and 4. The tens digit is greater than the ones digit. How many positive two-digit numbers have this property? If a number is divisible by both 3 and 4, it is divisible by the product of 3 and 4, which is 12. So basically, we're looking at multiples of 12. So 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 84, and 96. Now, they only want the ones where the tens digit is greater than the ones digit. So how about this one? The tens digit is 1. The ones digit is 2. Is the tens digit greater than the ones digit? No. How about this one? No, 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 yes. 6 is greater than 0, 7 is greater than 2, 8 is greater than 4, and 9 is greater than 6. So that means these four qualify, and that means the answer is A for number 14. A rectangle pool, rectangular pool, measures 20 by 8. And there is a one meter wide walkway around the outside of the pool, as shown in the shaded region, the area of the walkway. Okay, so I'll break it up into a couple segments, that segment and that segment. So this was eight from there to there. That's one. So I'm assuming this is also one from here to here. So this whole side is 10. 
and this side is 1 according to the question stem. And very similarly, this is also 1 and 10, the dimensions. So those guys have an area of 10, right? It would be just 10 times 1. And then this part here, well, that's 20, and that's 1. So that's going to have an area of 20. So total would be 20 plus 20 plus 10 plus 10. Total area of that shaded region. And that is 60, right? So 15, the answer is B. The results of asking 50 students if they participate in music or sports are shown in the Venn diagram. What percentage of the 50 students do not participate in music and do not participate in sports? So there's 50 students, and 15 looks like they only participate in music, only music, according to this diagram. Five participate in music and sports right because they are in both circles and 20 participate in only sports now what is the total here this is what 40 so there's 10 students that we didn't put in the diagram and those 10 students were the ones that do not participate in either participate in either music or sports so that is what they're getting at in this question this 10 but they don't want they they want the percentage so 10 out of the total and that's what 20 uh, percent yeah so 16 the answer is C there are two-thirds as many golf balls in bin F as in bin G if there are a total of 150 golf balls how many fewer golf balls are in bin F than in bin G? Okay, so we've got this bin here, and we've got this bin. This is F, and this is G. So we'll call this X, and this is therefore two-thirds X, basically according to the question. And they tell me that the total number of balls, which would be 2X plus X, is equal to 150. So you got to solve this. Okay, not a problem. Get a common denominator, and we get 5X over 3 is equal to 150 so therefore what is that 5x is 450 and therefore x is 90 right yeah x is 90 so this x is 90 and therefore th two-thirds of that would be 60 now they want you to answer how many fewer golf balls are in bin F compared to bin G well 90 minus 60 is the difference so 30 is the answer to this question that would be B right yeah B for 17 In the sequence shown, figure 1 is formed using 7 squares. Each figure after figure 1 has 5 more squares than the previous figure. What figure has 2,022 squares? So we have to look for a pattern, right? This has 7, this has 12, this has 17. So the equation is going to be 7 plus 5 times n minus 1, where n represents the figure number. And you can verify that this is indeed the formula by plugging in some numbers. Like, for example, when n is 3, it would become 7, 7 plus 5 times 2, which is 17. And they're saying, when does this equal 2,022? So for what value of n? Okay, so let's solve that equation. 5n minus 5 is equal to 2,022 minus 7 is 2015. So therefore, 5n is equal to 2020. And then n is therefore equal to 404. And there you go. That is the answer. So figure 404, 18 is therefore C. Mateo, his 300-kilometer trip from Edmonton to Calgary passes through Red Deer. Mateo started in Edmonton at 7 a.m. and drove until stopping for a 40-minute break in Red Deer. Mateo arrived in Calgary at 11 a.m., not including the break. What was his average speed? All right. So he starts in Edmonton, which is in Alberta, and goes to Calgary, which is also in Alberta. And I've been to both cities. And he passes through Red Deer. I have not been to Red Deer. And he starts at 7 a.m. And 
he takes a 40 minute break here so that's just he's not driving and then 11 a.m. is when he arrives so his total drive time from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. is not that full four hours it's four hours minus that 40 minutes so that is what three hours and 20 minutes yeah so in terms of a fraction that would be three and one-third hours okay well the formula is speed is equal to distance over time you guys remember that so speed would be distance which is 300 kilometers according to the question time is three and a third hours and therefore let's see here 300 over 10 over 3 which is 300 invert and multiply 3 over 10 and that looks like a 90 right 90 and of course it would be kilometers per hour and that is C Equilateral triangle ABC has side lengths 4, the midpoint of BC is D, and the midpoint of AD is E, the value of EC squared. Okay, so let's draw a diagram. Try to draw an equilateral triangle. All th sides are the same, we'll draw that uh, perpendicular. And let's label this, we got A, B, C, that's D, and then the midpoint of AD is E. So where would that be, about here approximately? Yeah, approximately there. Okay, so let's work with this now. So length is 4, 4, and 4. So when you draw the midpoint, D, it chops that into 2 and 2. And first we need to figure out AD. So using Pythagoras, AD squared plus BD squared is AB squared, right? Pythagorean theorem, which I assume grade 8 people know because that's how you would do this question. Okay, so AD squared plus 2 squared is 4 squared, so 16 minus 4 is 12, and therefore AD would be root 12, and root 12 is equivalent to 2 root 3. Now, ED is half that, so that's going to be just root 3 from E to D, and they want you to figure out the, list, the distance from E to C. Ah, okay. So they got another Pythagorean relationship. So now this time ED squared plus DC squared is equal to EC squared. And this is what they want you to figure out, EC squared. Okay, got it. So ED squared, well, that's going to be root 3 squared. DC squared is 2 squared. So EC squared looks like 3 plus 4. And that is 7. So 7 is the answer, and therefore that would be A for number 20.